Welcome everybody to the Straight Shoot a Wrestling Podcast. This is a first. We are doing our first straight shoot, quick shoot, short video with our newest content creator, Miss Wheezy Blonde. Wheezy, I'm excited for this because we've done some trials of this over the past uh, couple of months and really hasn't just worked out but now it's official yeah. you are here you are part of straight shoot and we've got an interesting topic today how, first off how are you i'm doing really good i'm tired and i finally have my voice back after being sick for a week so i uh, let's, let's let's do it all right for Ready. the people that have not seen the tiktok uh video of your introduction first we need to talk about something what? We, what? Ne we need to talk about some experiences you had the other weekend at the wrestling uh conference or what where were you indianapolis i was in indianapolis you're gonna give me hives talking about it yeah i'm gonna flustered. give you you getting all flustered is that why you're I'm blushing right now yeah <laughs> just a little bit well wheezy you had an interesting um opportunity is that what we're gonna I call it yeah we'll call it an opportunity uh more, well, proposition Wait, what's prop I read proposition you, you can just That's run with this i'm just gonna let you talk about this for a second go right ahead Okay, well, I went to this little, small, intimate wrestling expo. It was my first one, mind you. I've never been to one before. And if you don't know anything about me, I kind of have this thing where I don't want to meet wrestlers just because kind of the whole never meet your heroes shtick. Mm -hmm. But I walked by MJF's line. He was doing meet and greets, and the line was super short. So I hopped in. Uh, not even 10 seconds of me being in line. He spots me, and he just is like, Blondie, <laughs> Blondie, the blonde. And long story short, uh, he gave me his room number, found out it, it was legitimately his room number. Don't ask me how I know I did not go to his room, mm. but it was legitimate. Uh, and yeah, he just basically said that he was trying to try to get with me in more explicit words. Yeah, I think we, uh, we can maybe talk about that on the local side of thing. We can do like an exclusive content for, well, yeah, not, not that type of exclusive content, yeah. but <laughs> we can talk about uh, those stories over on straightshoot.locals.com. But Wheezy. Today we have an interesting topic. I want to talk about the draft. Triple H announced that we're returning with the, or they're bringing back the WWE draft. So this is going to be between Monday Night Raw, SmackDown, and I'm believing probably NXT is going to get involved in this. Yeah. Um, I hate the concept of the draft. Personally, I hate the concept of the draft, and we're going to get into this a little bit more, but I just want to make my opinions known. Ever since September, the draft has seemed completely irrelevant. Even though the Usos have had both titles, Romans have both titles, Solo doesn't really have a show. Um, Brock Lesnar seems to go wherever he wants. Cody goes wherever he wants. Lesnar. I know it's Brock Lesnar, but still. Brock Lesnar can, Brock Lesnar can do whatever he wants, but I, I understand. Okay, but like you look at like uh, Legado del Fantasma. They're a SmackDown okay. crew, and they're over on Raw. Ray and Dominic and Judgment Day. Judgment Day was on SmackDown last week, and they're a Raw faction, but Rhea is the champion of SmackDown. Now, like, it just... Ever since kind of Clash at the Castle, it seems all very convoluted. And unless they're really going to go back to the draft being a strict, you're on this show, you're on this show, and that kind of thing, like, I don't see the point in it. Was it ever from the beginning really actually split, though? Because I feel like even when they first introduced it, people were still hopping back and forth with the whole superstar shakeup thing. I think it's been a known thing that it's like, OK, what are the rules? What, okay. are, what are the actual rules? Because someone will show up every couple weeks anyway. But I think that's my point. If they're going to make a big announcement and make it like this big thing, like, ooh, Triple H is coming to make a big announcement. What could it be? Oh, it's the draft. Well, they're claiming he is, it's supposed to be bigger and different and it's going to be exciting because it's not the same as it was before. Hasn't been elaborated as to what that means or why, and, but that's kind of the general consensus of it. And maybe in the next couple of weeks, we'll get more context into this. But really, like you look at what the draft is and has been over the past however many years, like maybe they don't know. Maybe they don't even know. They're reintroducing the draft, but they don't really know what the big, different, exciting thing is going to be. They just know that they want to do it again. 
Probably because the networks are telling them to. Yeah, okay, I understand that. Like, Fox is probably going to say, hey, like, listen, Brock Lesnar's on Raw, but he draws more money. Like, we want him on SmackDown now yeah, type absolutely. thing. absolutely. I'm sure that's something that's playing a factor. Absolutely. But at the end of the day, what could be bigger and better that people are going to get drafted? I mean, I'm doing air quotes for the people that are listening to this on audio. Um, drafted? to nxt so ooh, carrying cross gets drafted to nxt so basically carrying cross just got a demotion yeah that would be a really big letdown there'd be an insane letdown actually but is that the only thing that we can see happening that is bigger and better i don't even i don't know what would necessarily make it so different and so better that this is the 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 uh direction that they need to go I really don't. I'm not sure why it's being reintroduced in such a way because they haven't actually done it in what? Has it been two years, three years? Two or three years now. There's not That's really and there's no GMs to draft like what Adam Pierce is just going to stand there and go, Oop, Cody, you go to SmackDown. Oh, Brock, yeah. you follow him. Oh, Roman, you do oh. whatever the fuck you want. No, no, no. Shane McMahon. We he came back at WrestleMania. What if, what if Shane takes over? Oh, we could go backwards. We could have Shane in charge of SmackDown. Adam Pierce can go, you know, to Raw. We could do it. <laughs> we're gonna it have happen. we're gonna have blown out quad Shane. <laughs> if, Vince, if Vince McMahon is really back, I mean that Shane. I th I think boy. we find out on Raw if Vince is actually back, like this coming oh, Raw. Um, so not excited. No, not excited at all. We don't even need to get in that. Okay, so no. let's let's talk about some potential um, big moves. So let's say the draft is going to be what it is. All these superstars on Raw all these superstars on SmackDown, and then all these superstars on NXT. Obviously, we're going to get some NXT call-ups. Um, we're going to get some, I think, personally, I think we're going to get some, quote, demotions. And then mm -hmm. there's going to be some surprises, maybe a return or something. Uh, cough, cough, biggie. Um, if he's Some tag team breakups. Some tag team breakups. The Judgment Day maybe getting separated. Dominic. Oh, no. Dominic losing mommy, maybe. How could they... Let's Don't. let's let, let's start with that then. Let's start with Judgment Day. What would be the reason to split them up? The Judgment Day is a raw a raw uh, faction. So keep them all on Raw. See, mm -hmm. this is why this isn't a good idea. But Rhea's SmackDown champion. Oh my God, you're right. That's what I'm saying. So you've got Dominic Mysterio, who is literally the little heel pet pet of uh, Rhea Ripley, like connected right. to her hip. Like, I think he was sitting close to her, closer to her at the um, Hall of Fame than Buddy Murphy was. Like, seriously, like, he, I'm pretty sure he was on her lap at one point. No, but you've got Finn, who's predominantly a Raw guy. And I think when and if they decide to split the titles, um, Finn's definitely one of those guys that needs to be in that conversation for a title. So oh, absolutely. Does he go over? Does he stay on Raw? What about Damian Priest? Damian Priest has been doing some great work lately. It's, they move them all to SmackDown. So, okay. So, but normally the draft is like 20 people, like 20 people or 10 people per. And that's like the, there's the top tier. The way they did it last time was ABC, like the main eventers and then the mid carters. And then the people that really never got announced, like Dana Brooke getting thrown over to, uh, you know what I mean? So you're yeah. going to, you're going to use three picks to take uh, judgment day over to SmackDown. I feel like the last time they did it, whether it was 2019 or even if they just did, did, did they consider the superstar shakeup the actual draft? I because think so. I feel like there was a time where they were just, ha they were having a Monday Night Raw and they just would show like an image that would be like so and so to Monday Night Raw. And there was no like formal True. sit down of, hey, this is what's happening. But this, this was also pre pandemic. So the pandemic yeah. played a lot into why I think the draft didn't happen. Um, mm -hmm. but now that we have this complete openness, no, don't have to worry about anything. How is this going to play out? We're going to have, we, first off, the draft doesn't work without the titles being split. There's so many avenues we can go with this. The draft does not work without the titles being split. So, so, so that just goes right back to, okay, what exactly is the point then? Because with Roman Reigns having both of the titles, he would be floating back and forth, even though he's technically, he's technically on SmackDown. Technically, yes. Technically, the only thing that is part of Roman Reigns that is on Raw is the WWE Championship. 
I don't know what they're going to do. So again, I'm going to hold that they don't know either. I, I don't think they know because unless bumping into walls, just Vince is back there. They don't know what's going on. <laughs> Vince, confused, Vince scared. with his mustache, unable to see going darts at the wall. Let's see what is, what happens. You know, like uh, <laughs> you're not a fan of Vince's mustache. No, who would be? Have you seen it? It looks like he looks like the wish version of Walt Disney with the same charges. He does. I want to know if he went and got it professionally done. Hairstylist. I'm sorry. I want to know if he got it professionally done or if he just went and got a box of like just for men and just slapped it on going through like Listen, the that, end of life crisis. That wasn't even box for men. That was like literally the, the powder that you shake onto your head and it, pray it doesn't it melt off. Like the, <laughs> oh, Vince. the worst part is his mustache during that interview for Endeavor was completely crooked. Like whoever shaved it missed like a whole corner. Like it was he just. Did it himself. A, oh, yeah. Yeah, he definitely did that. Or himself. or his new pet of the month that he paid off probably helped him shave. I don't know. Hey, divorce at 70. Like, listen, what are you gonna do? He's going through it. He's going through it. He don't know he don't know what, what day it is. Sell your company, get ten billion dollars, go buy a sports car and don't crash it. I'm still here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's get back on topic here. All right. Um, let's talk NXT. Let's talk <laughs> fuck. Let's talk NXT. Who okay, can, NXT. Who, who can we see coming up from NXT um, that could be like a possible like big surprise? A surprise. That's the, the key word there. Mm. Obviously, Braun Breaker. That's interesting you say that because I would have said Braun Breaker last week before seeing the highlights of NXT. With him and, with him and Carmelo. And the heel turn. Yeah. Okay. So That's like true. there's still story there, but also we did have Kevin Owens come up and accept a uh open challenge by John Cena while he was NXT champion. True. So we could see something like that. Like I, I agree. Um one of the ones I'm looking at is JC Jane um from Toxic Attraction. Okay. Well, yeah. I, she, for me, she's done all she can do down there. I don't see her being able to get into that feud with, um, oh God, what's her name? Uh, who's the champion down there right now? Index. I was just trying. Oh, Indy Hartwell. Indy Hartwell. There you go. Um, with Indy Hartwell, because you've got the other two girls that are both Braun Breaker's girlfriend there. Um, I don't know a lot about NXT. I don't know all their names. I don't either. But I'm trying it, to think. Of, I'm trying to think of the person that just lost the championship uh, that could possibly come up. Oh, oh god this is i can't think of a i don't know anyways yes she could probably come up you you look this up while while i keep talking but um no like i think anyone just outside of the um title picture that has kind of been a staple for nxt i think they missed a massive opportunity with separating toxic attraction completely um, because if they would have had Mandy or e 